What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Rivas Talk Sports. The NFL season is less than a week away, and I'm just as excited as you guys are. But in this video, I will be giving you my predictions for the NFL awards in the upcoming 2024 NFL season. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So the first award that I will be talking about is the Defensive Rookie of the Year. There's a lot of good options of what rookie will produce on the defensive side of the ball, but the one player that I'm going to choose is Dallas Turner. Um, Latu is a technician off the edge. He is going to have a phenomenal season with the Indianapolis Colts. The reason why I am selecting Dallas Turner is based off the situation that he is in. The Minnesota Vikings lost two key edge rushers this upcoming season, and there is about 24 and a half sacks up for grabs. Brian Flores is the defensive coordinator, and the Minnesota Vikings did call the most blitz out of all NFL teams, in which the Vikings did blitz 348 times, which is about 21% more than any other team in the NFL. So even though that Latu is the better technician, I'm going to decide to choose Dallas Turner based off upside, based off the amount of sacks that are up for grabs, the defensive coordinator, Brian Flores, and the situation that he's in. Jonathan Greenwood, Greenwood Grenard is on the opposite end, who did have 12 and a half sacks this past season. And I believe that will also help um, get pressure off the other side for Dallas Turner. So with my defensive rookie of the year, I'm going to select Dallas Turner. The next award... I will be talking about the Offensive Rookie of the Year. We have Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Marvin Harrison Jr., Bo Nix, and other good options. The one rookie that I think is going to have a phenomenal season in his rookie year, I'm going to select Jaden Daniels, quarterback from the Washington Commanders. Um, I have more faith in Jaden Daniels working with Cliff Kingsbury than I do with Caleb Williams working with Shane Waldron. When Cliff Kingsbury was with the Arizona Cardinals, he did have rookie Kyler Murray in which Kyler Murray did win the rookie of the year. And Jaden Daniels does have similar skill sets to Kyler Murray. Both are dual threat quarterbacks. Both love to operate in an air raid type offensive system. And I just think that suits Jaden Daniels well. Um, I do think that the commanders may be down in some games in which Jaden Daniels will probably utilize his arm and his legs a lot during the season. And I, it would not blow past me that Jaden Daniels will probably have about 4,000 total yards through the air and through the ground. And he could probably have about 30 touchdowns total from the air and on the ground. So Jaden Daniels is probably one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the upcoming season. I think he's going to have a phenomenal rookie season, and I just believe that he's going to operate very well in a Cliff Kingsbury offensive scheme than I do with Caleb Williams with Sean Waldron. I do think that Caleb Williams would have a good season, but I'm going to select Jaden Daniels. He's a great pre-snap processor. He's a stud, dual threat quarterback, and I think he's going to play a huge role in this commander's team in the upcoming season. My pick for rookie of the year, offensive, Jaden Daniels. For the offensive player of the year, we have Tyreek Hill, CMC, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. The one player that I think will probably win this award, I'm going to select CD Lamb, Tyreek Hill, great option. CMC, great option. Jamar Chase, great option. The one thing with Jamar Chase is how healthy is Joe Burrow going to be, right? Can he last a full season? Can he stay healthy? If that is the case, I do think that Jamar Chase is going to have a phenomenal year. Then we have CMC. We do have the injury bug starting to flare up a little bit. He is a t the top, like the best running back in the NFL. Um, I just don't know if he'll just continue to have that same value in this upcoming season. Ayuk did sign. They have Debo. They have Kittle. Brock Purdy's probably going to spread the ball around and give the ball to CMC, which I do think he's going to have a great year as well. I just don't think that CMC will continue to maintain that value as a running back as you know injuries can occur to running backs during the season as the volume start to increase. And then we have Tyreek Hill, phenomenal wide receiver, tier one wide receiver in the NFL. We do have Jalen Waddle coming back. And if Jalen Waddle does come back, and, and is healthy. I do see Waddle getting some target share. Since Tyreek Hill has joined the Miami Dolphins, he's been around the 30% target share in the receiving room, which is pretty elite, but you may have Waddle just cut into that target share if he does play a full season. 
I do have CD Lamb based off his inside out versatility. He does put himself in mismatch situations when he plays in the slot more than he does as an outside receiver. So he's avoiding a lot of CB ones, CB twos, and putting himself in a position to go against nickel corners, potential linebackers. And ever since he's come into the league as a wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys, receptions have increased, receiving yards has increased, and touchdowns have increased. And I just don't see anyone in that room cutting into his target share. I just don't see anyone in that room trying to decrease his receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. And C.D. Lamb did have the most red zone targets out of all wide receivers and yards after catch. As long as Dak Prescott is there, C.D. Lamb is the guy. And I just like the value of plus 1,000 for C.D. Lamb. He is my pick for us as offensive player of the year as i do think he may finish wide receiver one probably in fantasy but i think he could probably go down as probably the best wide receiver at this upcoming season so cd lamb that is my choice for offensive player of the year defensive player of the year tj watt michael parsons max crosby miles garrett miles garrett did win the award last year but in this upcoming season we do see tj watt and michael parsons with the same amount of odds I'm going to give it to TJ Watt. I've seen a lot of disrespect to TJ Watt this upcoming season and the offseason, and I see a lot of people not betting on him to win the Defensive Player of the Year. You got to be crazy. TJ Watt is probably one of the top edge rushers in the NFL. He did tie the single season sacks um, amount in 15 games played. So imagine if he played a full season. So he tied the single se season sacks record in 15 games played. If TJ Watt is healthy this upcoming season, he's going to want to take what's his, which is that Defensive Player of the Year award from Miles Garrett. And if there's one person that I think that can break that single season sacks record, it's TJ Watt. I do not be, I won't be surprised if he breaks it this upcoming season. If he stays healthy, this guy is a menace. This guy's a stud off the edge. And I'm going to have to give it to TJ Watt. There's been a lot of disrespect to TJ Watt. I've seen a lot of Miles Garrett getting it this upcoming season, Michael Parsons, Crosby. I'm seeing TJ Watt get left out a lot, and I think that's very disrespectful, and I'm not going to tolerate that disrespect to TJ Watt. So Defensive Player of the Year, I'm giving it to TJ Watt. I think he will have a phenomenal season, and if healthy, I have him breaking the single season sacks record in 2024. Coach of the Year Award. Great coaches. Um, but in this award, I'm going to take a flyer. I'm going to take a sleeper, and this can potentially hit. I'm going to select Matt LaFleur, coach of the Green Bay Packers, to see what he did last season with the youngest NFL team who were pretty much down and out within the first nine, 10 weeks, and to kind of regroup the team together and eventually help them make the playoffs. That takes great coaching and that takes great leadership to kind of group the team together, youngest team in the NFL, and make it to the playoffs as well as demolishing the Dallas Cowboys in the first round. Um, so he did a great job just grouping this team together and just trying to find weaknesses and make them strengths. Um, the one thing that the Green Bay Packers have going for them in the upcoming season is they're also the youngest team in the NFL again. And if I feel like if Matt LaFleur can just continue that momentum, coaching this team, have great leadership and definitely help Jordan Love start the season the same way he did in the second half, this team can win about 11 to 12 wins. This team can potentially be a threat to the Detroit Lions and win the NFC North. Um, right now, the Lions are are favorites to win the division but if the green bay packers win the division the nfc north that's a lot of credit to matt lafleur dealing with the youngest team in the nfl last year the green bay packers won nine games had anderson had anders carlson made his field goals and point after attempts you're probably looking at an 11 12 win season for the green bay packers last year so a lot of those losses came from missed field goals or point after attempts they do have a new kicker in the upcoming season. It's yet to determine how well he will do. But if the Green Bay Packers can roll into this upcoming season and get about 11, 12 wins, and if they knock out the Lions for the division, Matt LaFleur is a great value. And I would not mind putting money on that because Matt LaFleur is a great coach. And just tend for him to deal with what he has, which is the youngest team in the NFL, and just have them just work hard and make the playoffs last year. I do, them, I do see them being a Super Bowl threat in the upcoming season, so I, I will choose Matt LaFleur for Coach of the Year. Now we have the Comeback Player 
of the Year award. Aaron Rodgers is coming back. Kirk Cousins is coming back. Anthony Richardson, Joe Burrow. So four of these quarterbacks are coming back after dealing with injuries this past season. The one player that I'm going to choose to win comeback player of the year, I'm going to select Joe Burrow. The reason being is because Aaron Rodgers, he is up there in age. He's coming back from Achilles injury. I think they're probably going to rely on the run game a lot. I think this is going to be a very Brees Hall heavy offense, run the ball at Brees Hall, check down the ball at Brees Hall, a lot of short passes. And for the New York Jets to make the playoffs, they don't need Aaron Rodgers to play at an MVP level. Like they really don't. As long as the defense does their part and Aaron Rodgers just plays at minimum, maybe top 20 quarterback in the NFL, they're making the playoffs. So Aaron Rodgers does not need to play at an MVP level. If Even if he's the the 20th best quarterback in the upcoming season, the Jets are making the playoffs. So I don't think there is MVP type pressure on Aaron Rodgers anymore. So that's the reason why I don't consider him for comeback player of the year. Kirk Cousins up there in age, torn Achilles. I think this offense is going to run through B. John Robinson. I think we'll probably see a lot of short passes and relying on B. John Robinson a lot during the first half of the season before Kirk kind of lets it fly a lot, fly a little bit. But I don't think Kirk is probably going to have that type of 4,000 plus passing yards like we saw previously. So I do think that we're going to probably see a lot of short passes, um, a lot of B. John Robinson, just kind of just trying to get his groove back before he slings it out. And then Anthony Richardson, Shoulder injury is up in the air of how his shoulder is going to look this upcoming season. There have been reports that his shoulder hasn't been the same. Hopefully those are rumors, but he definitely needs to kind of be smart with running the ball and not try to run over linebackers. But I just think that this will be a very Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson type um, offense. And I just, I just can't choose any of these three quarterbacks over Joe Burrow. The Cincinnati Bengals run through Joe Burrow. As long as Joe Burrow is healthy and plays a full season, plays a full season, they are Super Bowl contenders. And if Joe Burrow, like I said, plays a full season, he is back in action, this team could be a threat. And if the Bengals can go from being the bottom of the division and finish first in the AFC North and make the playoffs and become Super Bowl threats, that is all because of Joe Burrow and his health. So Joe Burrow, healthy, bringing this team back alive, becoming Super Bowl threats. I'm going to give my money to Joe Burrow, comeback player of the year, bearing healthy season. Last but not least, we have the MVP award. Patrick Mahomes, CJ Stroud, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love. There's great, great options here. It is very hard to determine who's going to hit. If there is one player that I'm going to decide who could be the potential MVP of this upcoming season, I am selecting CJ Stroud for this team to have the second pick in the NFL draft. A couple of years ago, CJ Stroud literally put the Houston Texans on the map, put the team on his back, and pretty much slowly becoming Texas's favorite team for what he did as a rookie was phenomenal. He won Rookie of the Year last year, becoming the face of the franchise. They did acquire Stephon Diggs to this offense. So now you have Tank Dell, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs. Then you have Dylan Schultz. They did bring in Joe Mixon. This offense is locked and loaded. As long as the offensive line can protect CJ Stroud and give him clean pockets, he is going to dice up defenses. He is a phenomenal quarterback, franchise quarterback, and can definitely take the lead league by storm and it's kind of hard to put anyone else on this list above cj stroud maybe patrick mahomes back-to-back super bowl champions very hard to put josh allen in there top three quarterback in the nfl the raw receiver room is a little revamped joe burrow is up in the air of how his health is going to be but i do think burrow will be comeback player of the year um but cj stroud i would put my money on cj stroud Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, and Nico Collins. It's kind of like a picker poison receiving core. And I think that whether it's Stephon Diggs being a decoy or being the number one or anyone else in that receiving room, CJ Stroud is going to find you and he's going to pick apart defenses. I won't be surprised if he throws over 4,000 yards and have over 35 plus touchdown passes this upcoming season. But CJ Stroud looked like an MVP candidate last year. He's definitely a serious MVP contender and candidate this upcoming season. So it would not blow it past me if he wins the MVP this upcoming season. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up and give me your thoughts and opinions of each of these awards in the comment sections below. Thank you so much, and I will be giving out week-by-week -week game predictions starting on Monday. Thank you so much, and catch you next time.